And welcome back to the Digital Education Station, everybody. I am Ryan Fran, Chief Communications Officer for Arcadia Unified School District, and we are joined, as always, by our superintendent, Dr. Van Alstal. This is our fourth video strictly dedicated to personalized learning. We talked last week in our last personalized learning video about the timeline and rollout over the next three years. And we mentioned, you talked about how we're going to start with a pilot at the Arcadia Education Center, the AEC. Right with a group of students. Um, so we decided let's talk more about that, what that look looks like, what that will entail, um, which is very intriguing, a lot of interest from parents and teachers talking about this. Right. How do I get in on the pilot? Who's gonna be involved? So let's chat about that today. Um, pilot starting in January and kind of what that will entail. Yeah, the details are rolling out quickly. So, you know, just like uh, any of our implementations with um, Chromebooks or, you know, the, the um, data system that we have, PowerSchool, um, we have to move slow. So I just want to keep emphasizing the fact mm -hmm. that I know there's a lot of excitement. Uh, you know, I'm as excited as anyone about this. Um, but it's so important that at each step we get it right. Mm -hmm. So um, we are going to start here at the AEC in January with 30 students, roughly 30. It could end up being one or two, more or less, um, that we are going to select from each of the middle schools. So it's going to be a group of seventh graders. Okay. And um, our, we're working with our principals and our teachers right now. Um, to kind of get the word out and look for some parents that um, would be willing to volunteer uh, as parents and as students to be part of something really special and new and innovative. Um, but it is an experiment. I mean, there's going to be some rough edges. There's going to, you know, the, the students are going to be working side by side with teachers that are learning mm -hmm. with them as they move through the platform because they'll all be kind of getting on it together. Um, you know, just like teachers, there's early adopters. There's students that are like that too. There's yeah. the ones that, you know, they just, they like the way things are and just let me be. But there's also those students that are sitting in classes right now and, and, and wish something was a little different for mm -hmm. them. And so we really want to uh, take advantage of those students and have them come over and uh, be a part of that. So we're going through the selection process. In January, we'll have those 30 students, roughly 30. And we're looking for um, about a third from each of our middle schools. So a, a group that kind of represents a, a, our, our uh, demographics mm -hmm. and uh, um, all three of our middle schools. Because we, want, we know their teachers back at the middle school are going to be watching and involved and you know they know the students so it's going to keep everyone very involved mm -hmm. as we roll this out. Um, so that's the students. The, the teachers are going to be um, our current coaches, our academic and our tech coaches. The reason for that is that our coaches as we move to all of the elementary and middle schools in August, um, we want them to have hands-on support that are so-called experts of the platform. Mm -hmm. So we need a, a number of teachers, not just one or two, to, to really do a deep dive, be involved with this platform for the next six months so that when we go to scale at the elementaries and middles, even though it's only probably one grade level of teachers, that they each have a, a teacher mm -hmm. that can come right beside them and really help them through the implementation mm -hmm. um, in August of next year. So we'll ha probably have, you know, on any given day, it could be five, six teachers, not mm -hmm. in the classroom the whole day, yeah. but rotating in and out, um, working along with the, uh, the students to really just, uh, you know, experience what this platform can be. So let me just give an example. Mm -hmm. um, teachers will push out. Normally teachers will say, you know, here's what we're going to do today. Um, generally it's one statement to the whole class, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to be doing this. Um, instead of doing that, um, in the platform, things are pushed out, lessons are pushed out, directions are pushed out um, through the platform. So on a typical day, a student comes in in the morning, of course they'll do restorative practices, probably start mm -hmm. the morning in a circle, it's just a great way, it's kind of like the old homeroom when I was a yeah. kid, you know, talk about the day and any issues that, that people need to know about. And then uh, they would open their Chromebook and they would see cards, a uh, playlist that are specific to them that's mm -hmm. been pushed out by the teacher. So when a teacher creates a lesson um, that they want the kids to do, they just push it out through the platform. But the key is it can be one for everyone. So you could do the same thing for every child, but you can also pick and say, I just want this lesson to go to these five kids and I want a modified lesson of that to go to the 10 over here. Um, so that controls that. 
So you're a student, you open your Chromebook, you get your playlist, but that could be the end of the Chromebook for the next mm -hmm. two hours. And I emphasize that because a lot of people, again, think of this personalized learning being on the computer mm -hmm. all the time, and it doesn't necessarily mean that. Um, they could then be getting reading what they're gonna do in their project, but it means group work where they're creating something with four or five other mm -hmm. students for the next two hours. Um, so, you know, it, 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 the teacher is still the one that is controlling um, what that lesson is, what the content is, and what that child's doing. Um, so um, that's kind of what it's going to look like in addition to the um, 30 students that we're going to have at the AEC. And by the way, um, we're right now we're calling it the uh, Rancho. All of the umbrella name for all of our mm -hmm. services here at District Office is Rancho. Mm -hmm. So it's, we're calling it the Rancho Alt uh, lab school. Lab because it's an experiment. Mm -hmm. we, we are truly um, doing something very new um, and watching how it goes. Um, I'd also mention that the uh, space is, is also very innovative. We're mm -hmm. playing around with flexible space and, fl and instead of just saying this to the students, here's the four walls and this is our classroom, mm -hmm. um, we're really working with them to watch what are the working patterns throughout mm -hmm. the, you know, how many kids are working by themselves, you know, alone, how many kids are working together collaboratively, and begin to rearrange the space to match um, what they're doing to maximize um, efficient time for mm -hmm. students so that the environment is, is beneficial to them, not just here's four walls and desks and here's what a classroom yeah. looks like. So when I say lab, it truly is looking at the environment, the teaching pedagogy, um, how the, the lessons are put out to students, how they're gonna interact with the platform. It's gonna be very exciting. Also wanna mention that the two rooms downstairs that we're gonna be using have two-way mirrors in them. And that's gonna benefit our other teachers that as we progress, not right away, but you know, let's say we get into February, March, teachers that are very interested at our other sites that are mm -hmm. wanting to pilot it yeah. um, in August, will have a chance to come over and observe and watch what this class looks like during the day. Mm -hmm. Kind of take the mystery out of it right. and see um, so that there's no one that's saying, I want to do it, but I have no idea what this is or right. what it looks like. So. so is there a main difference if I'm a parent and my kid's going to be a part of this pilot program, this lab school? from my class, what's I guess the big difference between my class now at First Avenue and how this lab school, this pilot will operate? Yeah. Am I gonna, when I walk in the class, am I gonna see a huge difference? Right. What's kind of the, the yeah. main? You know, it's a good question and it's hard to answer that because we have so many innovative practices going on around the district, right? right. So a lot of these practices and even how work's being um, put out on, on the platform may not be new to some students because some students might have teachers right, right now that everything's being pushed out by Google Classroom yeah. and all of their projects are collaborative, um, cross-curricular. You know, I was at First Avenue a while back and, you know, the kids were talking about hurricanes in um, social studies class, you know, the effects of and yeah. the impact on cultures. Then I went into science and those same students mm -hmm. that share the same teachers were studying um, weather patterns. So it was, you know, truly yeah. a, a cross-curriculum um, project. So students are going to see that. Um, and so some may have experienced already, some it yeah. may be very new. Um, but what it means is the teachers are aware and, and conscious of what the students are experiencing in each of the classes. And it, so they may not really know that they're in math mm -hmm. or they're in science or social studies mm -hmm. because it's going to be project-based. And uh, as, they, as they create projects and study, there'll be math components, they'll be working in the standards for science. Um, I believe the students will only know that they're enjoying it, they're learning and having fun, and they won't necessarily know that yeah. the bell rang and now it's math, now the bell rings and it's science. We're trying to get away from that. That's the old 100-year-old model right. of the factory where the bell rings, you get up and you leave, and more of a fluid day. Um, but fluid meaning that it's designed by the teacher, not that every student's mm. just doing whatever they want. It's very intentional, but um, the, the teachers are going to be using the data um, from assessing students to know that you know this student, not just academic, but social skills needed mm -hmm. for that student. You know they may really need to be working with a team and, right. and building some teamwork skills. Mm -hmm. Where another student, they've got that down. They they're really you know maybe there's a gap and they need some intervention. So they'll be doing some direct instruction with a teacher one on one. So you're going to see a lot of varied teaching techniques going on 
in the same space. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting. So that's a great point you make because while personalized learning is new to a lot of people, even in our own district, we're seeing a lot of it from our teachers, the mm -hmm. strategies, and our students are experiencing it as we speak. So while we're talking about making it uh, more broader in a sense, you talk about it. we visit classrooms and sites and you see a lot of the strategies, you see flexible yeah. seating, you see that collaboration. So it's just a mix, I guess, and it's not totally new to our students no. and to our parents and our teachers. You know, another one we talk about a lot is student voice, making sure that students have a voice in their learning. So it's mm -hmm. not just sit and get and they're, you know, one of 30 and something's being delivered to them. Um, that they have a chance to give input about their interests and their passions and um, the audience that they're actually designing work for is very important. Mm -hmm. And we call that student agency. And that truly is the essence of personalized learning is that a, a, a student is learning agency, which means they, you know, they're empowered, they have self-efficacy, they feel in control of their learning, they feel like it's purposeful, so that the purpose isn't to just turn it into a teacher and get a grade, mm -hmm. that there's some greater meaning, there's an audience that they're presenting to, they're solving problems, whether it's local problems, world problems, you know, it's something greater than themselves that they're a part of, um, and that's student agency, and we know from the research that that's what drives student learning and the love of learning. Mm -hmm. so. One thing that may be different for some people, although again we're seeing it in our classrooms throughout our district, is that what you touched upon, flexible seating and the environment, if you haven't been in a classroom in 20 years, <laughs> right. it'll look different. So yeah. what will the pilot program look like downstairs? And if you're used to walking in a class with six rows of desks, six deep, you're not gonna yeah. see that. Talk about flexible seating in the environment that students are now sure. learning in. Yeah, and, and you just said it, but I wanna reiterate that, that um, in, in our district, mm -hmm. there is uh, more flexible classrooms, um, seating classrooms than, than traditional. Right. Um, and we always talk about this 100-year-old model, and I always want to be careful that we are, we have been kind of tweaking a 100-year-old model, mm -hmm. but in Arcadia, we've come a long way, and most of those classrooms look like that. So you'd walk in, and, and you truly, well, I'll give you an example. I was in a classroom, a third grade classroom the other day, and the teacher had all the students sitting up by the board, and they were giving directions about a project that they were all going to be working on, and there was different roles. And when they were done, the teacher simply turned around to the students and said, now, go find a space in the classroom that you can be successful at today. Now, when you turn around and looked at the classroom, <laughs> there was everything from some bean bags that were on the floor, there was a, a bookshelf that had towels, like, like uh, beach towels. And a, a group of girls got out towels and they put them out on the floor and they laid down with their Chromebooks and they, you know, to regular tables, you had like, almost like uh, cubicles where kids were working alone. So you literally had just you know maybe six, seven different spaces in the classroom. The key though was every student was engaged. Yeah. Uh, and and so it just you know and, and we're very different as adults. You know I, I we used to talk about uh, Dr. Wilson and myself both were working on our doctorate at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the weekends when I needed to work on my paper, I'd drive back to my office because. Yeah. For me, that was the best place to just be engaged and, and write. For Dr. Wilson, it was in a chair in his backyard, like a lawn chair with his laptop on his, yeah. on his you know, lap and he was just cranking. I wouldn't be able to work like that. So it's not just about kids. All of us as adults yeah. even, you know, we, we work best in different environments. Anything else we should know about the pilot schools? They get ready to go in January? Just that we're, we're eager to share what we learn, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I think this is part of our values is to be creative, to learn from failure. Uh, we know this is, you know, we're gonna learn a lot. There's yeah. gonna be things that don't work, um, but the key is with these students, um, I, you know, t personally, I would love for my own child to be a part of something like this yeah. because to me, the skills of, of watching a teacher try something and it may work and you learn together, but if it doesn't work, you also learn why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And, and these, these students that will be a part of this get to see initially that that's what life's about. It's about iterations. That's mm -hmm. what our entrepreneurs are so successful because right. they're willing to try something, make a mistake and learn from it. So um, we're excited and uh, I think we have a, a great group of teachers that are willing to um, you know, jump in and, and just get their, their uh, hands dirty and, and make it work. So. Uh, We'll, we'll be sharing um, as uh, the, the months unfold what we're learning and where we are. I think it may be important to share too that when we talk about the academic coaches and tech coaches will be the teachers, 
they're all former teachers and very good teachers, so it's they, correct. They, it's right up their alley and right. something they're used Students to. Students are going to be in good hands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're going to be in good right. hands. So, all right, Dr. Benalso, we appreciate it. So next time in our digital education station, we talk about personalized learning. We'll talk about the role of the teacher, what mm -hmm. that means, looks like in the pilot and throughout uh, the rollout the rest of the way. Um, so more on specifically the role of the teacher with personalized learning and, and how that There's unfolds. a lot of misconceptions with that, so I'm looking forward to sharing that. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Bernalsko. Thank you. Thank you.